Good morning. Good morning. Yes. <clears throat> and welcome to our worship service. Welcome to Henderson Presbyterian Church worship service this morning. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, the plan of the Lord is very clear. It is to give us the best. And in response to the plan, we come here to give back our praise, our worship, and to give glory to God. And so again, whether we are here inside the sanctuary or joining us through YouTube, let us put and offer our whole selves to God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. To God be all glory and praise. Amen. For our announcements, again, our usual Sunday school and coffee hour after our worship service, and this coming Thursday, August 18, our adult Bible study at 10 in the morning at the Fireside Room. We also have our Board of Deacons meeting today during the coffee hour. We also are uh, asking the congregation if you, uh, for those who want to volunteer as a lay leader in our worship service, please sign up your name at the sign up sheet at the Nartex area. We'll appreciate it. We'll appreciate it so much. Okay, so are there any other announcements? If not, let's begin. Good morning. Good morning. Will you please rise as you are able and join me in our call to worship? We gather centered in the promises of God. World in wonder and joy. Welcome into the house of blessing. We gather surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Moved by challenging words and heartfelt prayers. Please bow your heads for the opening prayer. Holy God, the stories of the saints through the ages come to us as a gift, for it is through them that we have learned the meaning of faith. We receive this gift with thanks and praise. We are grateful for their, for their example, for showing us the way, for challenging us to continue to live faithful lives. Grant us the persever perseverance when the race gets tough, courage when the trials beset us, and rest when we grow weary from the struggles of life. May Christ's joy renew us as we fix our eyes upon him. Amen. Please join me in our first hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Committee in preparation for our children's message. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for these children of God. 
we know that you will continue to guide and lead them to grow, to be strong in their faith. Father, it is you, through your son Jesus, that we have this faith. And we want our little children to grow in faith in Jesus. Again, oh God, here they are. We are your children. Guide and lead them to this day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. children and thank you to their mom Isabella thank you. Yes. and thank you to Lauren for bringing them here and the church we'll now go to our time of sharing the giving of our tithes and offerings indeed we're doing giving to God because it is our response to the love he has given us and because he loves us so much we give back to him whatever is due to him because as uh, jesus said give what is due to caesar and give what is due to god indeed we have those things that we need to accomplish and to do in our lives and when we give we give with a cheerful heart and when we give we give what is right and not what is left amen
Let us pray. God of all love and peace, we come to you in faith, offering you access in every area of our lives. We are humbled, Father, that you listen to our prayers. You are such a holy and magnificent God, and yet you want to hear from us. Enable us to do our work quietly in a manner that pleases you. Grant us discernment to fulfill our vocations with industry and hard work. May we not grow weary in doing good. We look to you, Lord of all, mindful of our helplessness. So we bring our requests before you. We ask for good health and strength for Marian Roth and for Vera. We also leave up the prayer requests coming from Marian regarding her friend Mary Ellen who has kidney stones. We pray for healing and comfort. We also leave up the prayer for Pam, John, and uh, Shirley Chris Knowles for a breakthrough in their relationship. Also for strength and good health for Alice's daughter to be out of the hospital and her husband, Cindy and John Corso. Indeed, O oh God, we believe and we know you are always there for us, not only listening to our prayers, but answering it and moving into the lives of those people that we have lifted up. We know, O oh God, that you see us and know us. But we boldly ask you to heal us, to help us, and to forgive us. In praying, O oh God, we admit that we need you, that you and you alone control all things. We just trust and rely on you, O oh God, in your power, in your strength, in your mercy and love. We glorify your name in the midst of our need. And so we pray all this, O oh God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us that when we pray, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
required. The Old Testament lesson for today is Jeremiah 23, 23 through 29. Father, please bless this Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of, will the, will the, hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesied lies and who prophesied deceit of their own heart plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for all. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Our New Testament lesson is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 29, up to chapter 12, verse 2. And it reads, By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection, others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sown in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet, all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Again, a pleasant good morning to all. Yes, we thank God for always giving us the opportunity to worship Him, to glorify His name. And it is His grace and His blessings that has given us the strength, the enthusiasm, and the faithfulness to continue our worship and service to Him. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so whether we are here in the sanctuary or again joining us to YouTube, we make it our aim to be pleasing to God. 
Shall we bow our heads again and pray? Let us pray. Beloved God, open our hearts to your healing word, our minds to your informing word, our souls to your renewing word. We ask you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance and leading. May we be strengthened to live out our faith by expressing your love in word and in deed. Amen. Last Sunday, we discussed about faith that last, focusing on the faith of Abraham. The faith that relies solely on God's power, wisdom, and strength, which was passed on to succeeding generations that has reached us to this day. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, we continue, we continue with that faith and our discussion on faith and the verses that we have today talks about other Israelites' heroes of faith, looking and hearing their stories. We saw the power of faith in their lives, how they responded to God and the benefits they received. What can the power of faith do based on our text in Hebrews 11? And Hebrews 12. First, my dear brothers and sisters, it produces great miracles and victories. Verses 29 to 30 talks about the Red Sea and the walls of Jericho. Those are great and awesome miracles. God did those extraordinary things and supernatural occurrences to win the battle for his people. He dried the Red Sea and made the walls of Jericho fell. All the people need is to believe, to obey and follow God's commands. It is because, as written in 2 Corinthians chapter 20, verses 15b, thus says the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we should not fear, for God is always with us and He is always in control. Again, as written in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is always with you wherever you go. Wow! Those are the words and promises of God to us. Whatever battles we are facing today, my dear brothers and sisters, whether in health, in finances, in relationships, and many other more. God is there for us and with us. He will never leave nor forsake us. All we need is to trust and rely on Him. That is faith. And it's powerful. It's powerful. Verses 31 to 33 showed us that God gave those other heroes of faith victories. Victories over challenges and enemies, even sometimes it seems to be an insurmountable odds. The story of Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all other prophets showed that God gave them guidance and a clear direction of what to do and where to go to achieve success and victory. The power of faith, my dear brothers and sisters, produces miracles and victories and makes us strong and brave. Verses 34 to 35 gave us details that despite facing physical harm, abuse, and torture, those heroes of faith, they remain steadfast in their faith. They did not give in to the hardships and pain. 
Again, it is faith in God that enabled them to overcome those situations. My dear brothers and sisters, when our back is against the wall, to whom can we turn to? God. God. God is our source of courage, the source of our strength, the source of our victory and success. Verses 36 to 38 showed us that faith does not make us fear humiliation, imprisonment, and even death. We face those situations with confidence that we will overcome because God is with us. We can expect the best results. Whether the result seems to be not good in our eyes, or in other people's eyes, we still believe that it is the best for us. For Romans 8.28 said, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Let us always remember that sometimes on the eyes of people, God failed us. But no, no. It's not because sometimes we need to pass on those failures to be strong, to be resilient, and to be committed so that we could have that success and victory. We build upon those failures to be successful. We may sometimes lose again some battles, but eventually we will win the war. The enemy of Jesus thought they defeated him. When he was crucified on the cross and he died there but they do not know that it must happen for the whole plan of salvation to become true and we know and believe that his dying on the cross save us because the blood of jesus cleanses us from all sins that is what makes us strong and brave to face all odds because we are covered by the power of faith in Jesus and assured of a place in the kingdom of God. Yes, it is Jesus. Jesus is the source of the powerful faith in us. Verses 39 to 40 of Hebrews, in, in, in chapter 11, including verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 12, tells us, that we need to persevere in our faith, in our faith journey and focus on the source of faith. We don't believe that the end result of that is perfection for us, brought by God's grace and our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we defined faith as the certainty that something good will happen in the future or our expected results will come true because of our belief in God through faith in Jesus Christ. We felt assured and confident because we already know the end and that is eternal life through Jesus. And we will be in the best place that anyone can be and that is in the kingdom of God. That is our faith. That is the power of faith in us. And the source of that powerful faith is, not, is none other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In verse 2 of chapter 12 of Hebrews, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand, of the throne of God. Jesus is the source of that faith and has prepared a place for all of us who believe in Him, a place in the kingdom of God. As written in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And Jesus said, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Who is the way? Who is the way? It is not other than our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so we know the end. We know that the end is the best for all of us. And so in ending, the power of faith produces great miracles and victories. And it makes us strong and brave in dealing with the daily realities, routines, and challenges of life. And the source of that powerful faith is no one else but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have that faith and we cling on and hold on to that faith because Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith, we cannot please God. So we have that faith in us and my prayer is that we always experience that power of faith in our lives. Indeed, God is good all the time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now proceed with the uh, installation and ordination of our deacon. Lori, can we ask Lori to please come forward? I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called. I believe I need also to call on uh, Christian because I really haven't yet. Again, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We are called by God to be the Church of Jesus Christ, a sign in the world today of what God intends for all humankind. The call of Christ is a willing, dedicated discipleship. Our discipleship is a manifestation of the new life we enter through baptism. Discipleship is both a gift and a commitment, an offering and a responsibility newly elected or elected deacons, the grace bestowed upon you is sufficient for your calling because it is God's grace. By God's grace, we are saved and enabled to grow in faith and commit our lives in ways that serve Christ. God has called you to a particular service and this is the service of being a deacon. I will read the description of deacons, the ministry of deacon as set forth in the scripture is one of compassion, witness, and service, sharing in the redeeming love of Jesus Christ for the poor, the hungry, and sick, the lost, the friendless, the oppressed, those burdened by unjust policies or structures or anyone in distress, persons of spiritual character, honest review, exemplary lives, brotherly and sisterly love, sincere compassion, and sound judgment, 
are chosen and elected for this ministry. And so, show your purpose by answering these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge Him, Lord of all, and Head of the Church. And through Him, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the Church Universal and God's Word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the Confessions of our Church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you be governed by our church polity and will you be able and abide by its discipline? Will you be friends among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further peace, unity, and purity of the church? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you be faithful deep, teaching charity, urging concern and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. Our ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? And now, uh, our elder will ask questions to the congregation. Do we, the members of this church, accept Christian and Lori as deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ, if so say, I do. I do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church, if so say, I do. I do. Thank you. Let us pray. Faithful God, in baptism you claim us, and by your Holy, by your Holy Spirit you are working in our lives empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading these two deacons to this time and place. Establish them in your truth and guide them by your Holy Spirit, that in your service they may grow in faith, hope, and love, and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lori and Christian, you are now commissioned to service. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Him. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our two different Christian who are able to please rise for our closing hymn.
that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the chain. Now he is seated in the place of honor before God's throne. So go now with your eyes ever on Jesus. Show our faith in him in living our daily life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.